I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and Nokia is making a bold effort to get back in the U.S. smartphone market with the high-end Nokia Lumia 900. It's packing a single-core 1.4 gigahertz processor, a beautiful design, a 4.3-inch display, and an 8-megapixel camera, and better yet, it's 100 bucks on contract and available in blue and black on April 8th and available in white on April 22nd also for $99.99. Is this the must-have device? Can this save Windows Phone? Can this increase those market share numbers, which as the race tightens is going to become increasingly important? Let's find out in the full review, which starts right now. You know what? I haven't been this excited about a device in a long time. This is the Nokia Lumia 900. It's coming to AT&T on April 8th for $99.99, and it's coming in two colors on April 8th. Cyan, which we see here, kind of this blue color, and black, and it's going to be available in white on April 22nd for $99.99 as well. So I'm really excited for a couple of reasons, and like I said on Twitter, I'm probably the most excited about this I've been since the HTC Evo 4G, and the reason why is it represents a huge change for Windows Phone, because you look at traditional Windows Phone devices, and you realize that they're really just rehashes of Android phones, and that's fine, you know, if you know that the design doesn't matter that much to you, but you look at HTC and Samsung's devices, some of the stuff they've worked on recently, and you can see, hey, this thing looks a lot like an Android phone. They just pulled Android off and slapped Windows Phone onto it. No real changes. Nokia is staking their reputation on Windows Phone. They're betting it all on the Windows Phone platform as their comeback strategy in the United States of America and around the world. And I, you know, I'll tell you, I've been using this device for about a week. Absolutely love the feel of it. It's a high quality device. You really can't beat the $100 price point. I mean, this thing's packing some some awesome specs. But before I get into that, special thanks to Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with phones like this. For you, Star One Paul Bandit game that we give to you on the website at phonedog.com, when you go into Best Buy Mobile to get your Lumia 900 or whichever phone you go with, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up all your live tiles, your email, your web, your calendar, your marketplace, and more. So when you walk out the door, you're working at Best Buy Mobile. So this device is exciting on several different levels. It's a very high end device for 100 bucks, and it's packing a 1.4 gigahertz single core. Snapdragon processor, a 4.3 inch AMOLED display with clear black technology, an 8 megapixel Carl Zeiss camera on the back with 720p HD video recording, a 1830 milliamp hour battery, 4G LTE connectivity as you can see right here, and Windows Phone 7.5 also known as Mango. So again, I can't emphasize enough the price point. This is going to be huge for a lot of people that walk into AT&T and really want a high-end smartphone, but they don't want to spend $199 or $299. This is going to be an awesome device for them. Windows Phone still relatively new in the smartphone landscape, particularly when compared to iOS and Android, which have pretty significant market market shares in the uh, the marketplace right now but you can see it's a wonderful looking device and just to give you a rundown volume rocker over here power button sandwich right below the volume rocker a camera shortcut button so you can easily access that 8 megapixel camera. You got a front face, uh, excuse me, a front facing camera up top, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, micro USB charging port, micro SIM card slot here, and then your speaker down here at the bottom. It's all housed in this polycarbonate shell and it's blue all the way through. And same thing, you get the black one or the white one. It's a shell. It's not going to be one of those things where you scratch it or you drop it and you get it nicked and you're going to see any sort of white or any sort of different colors showing underneath. It's blue all the way through. So if I knock this right now, which I won't do because ATT is probably watching, and I don't think they'd like that too much if I nicked their review phone but you can uh, it'll be blue all the way through until the uh, to the very end so really high end quality high end specs and again, you know, 4.3 inch display, which I think is a nice balance for a lot of people that really want something for great media consumption, but they don't, uh, you know, they don't need a 5.3 inch display or 4.7 inch display. Let's go through this and take a look in a walkthrough. And obviously I've installed some applications since I'm using this device as part of my 30 day challenge, which you can find on the site at youtube.com slash phone dog and online at phone dog.com. And you can follow the challenge as I go through and get some more in-depth details of the Lumia 900 and Windows phone. But take a look here and you can see the AT&T stuff that comes out of the box as well as some Nokia stuff. App highlights, for example, is a Nokia thing. Then you can come down here and see AT&T Code Scanner, AT&T Navigator, Radio, UVerse Mobile, and we can keep scrolling, see some apps that I've installed, of course, my AT&T, and then you can see YP Mobile down here at the bottom. Now, the fortunate thing is all the AT&T stuff can be uninstalled. AT&T's listen to their customers. They allow you to do that, which is a really nice touch. And you've got some Nokia stuff as well. Now, Nokia Drive and Nokia Maps don't come pre-installed out of the box, but when you go to App Marketplace, or App Highlights, rather, We'll load it up so you can take a look here, and it brings up this Nokia specified application, and our Nokia specific application. You can see some featured apps, staff picks, starter kit, back to school, and not only can you see the highlights, but you can go into the actual marketplace here, and then go to Nokia collection, and easily see all the stuff that Nokia would recommend, including 
Nokia Drive, Nokia Maps, and Nokia Transit. So those are really nice. We'll get into those more in part two with Nokia Drive and Nokia Maps. But great additions and complaints that I've had about Windows Phone in the past are addressed, obviously, with a turn-by-turn -turn navigation system and more. But here's what you see when you turn on the device for the first time, although obviously the tiles will be a different color. This is what Windows, or Microsoft rather, refers to as Metro UI. It's intended to look like subway tiles, but like I talk about in all my Windows Phone 7 reviews, there are some limitations to the personalization that you can do to this home screen. For example, you'll see my calendar is a rectangular square, a rectangle rather, and then up here, my email for Phone Dog for Aaron Baker are all square. And I can see a perfect use scenario here where messaging, email, calls, and more are all rectangular squares so you can easily see who called you or who messaged you or which emails you have out of the gate without having to actually open the application. It really kind of solves that widget problem that's been plaguing iOS and to a lesser extent has been plaguing Windows Phone as well. But unfortunately, that's system set. You can't really make Bank of America a rectangular one, for example, or Facebook a rectangle, or, uh, you know, for example, pictures a square. Yeah, unfortunately, you're stuck with what you get but it's pretty easy to bring something out. So we'll go to American Airlines, for example. I can pin it to the start screen, and it's right there. And then from there, I can move it around and kind of customize my home screen how I see fit. I can drop it there, I can drop it here, and leave it right there. Or when I want to get rid of something, I can just delete it, and that's a nice little touch. One other thing that I've really enjoyed about Windows Phone 7 is for those people you call on a regular basis, you can set custom tiles on the actual home screen. So for example, I call test contact quite a bit. I think that looks pretty familiar. Actually, that view looks pretty familiar too. I can put those on the home screen. So if you call your mom on a regular basis, you call your girlfriend, your significant other, your wife, your husband, whoever, you can place all those on the home screen and have easy access to that actual contact card. That brings me into something else that I really like about this. We'll go into people and we'll take a look here and you can see all, and of course I can bring down all of my contacts. It shows me, and because I have Twitter integration here, it shows me the uh, most recent tweet that I sent to, actually <laughs> to Chris Ziegler of uh, The Verge as a joke about something he posted earlier. But I can easily come in here and see what's new, and I can follow that, and of course I can see recent people that I've talked to, and I can scroll through. Now this is a nice little touch as well. I can click on A, and it shows me all the contacts that I have in my phone. So I can easily look and say, I don't have any contacts that start with I, or O, or Q, or U, or X, or Y. Apparently I do have some that start with Z and A and B and C. So you get the idea, I can easily click on one of those and it'll take me right to those contacts. And of course I can add a new one pretty easily by going to new contact. And we'll create that contact in Windows Live. And then you can see I can add the photo. So it's all about minimalism here. And it's actually, to me, more minimalistic than uh, iOS. I can come in here and add the name. We'll call him Scott Jones. Scott Jones. You can see the keyboard in use here. 4.3 inch display and of course Windows Phone keyboard it yeah, does a pretty decent job with autocorrect, and I'll show you some more features there as well. What I can do, we'll go into messaging and show you that in just a minute. But you know, down here, obviously, this means save and this means close. But let's say I'm in a menu where I don't quite know what they mean. I can click these three dots, which corresponds to kind of the, a right click, if you will, on a computer, and I can see below save and cancel and easily uh, get out of that. So let's go into messaging and take a look at the interface here. Threads, obviously, and then I have my online access integrated in. And all I have to do is swipe back and forth between those. And I can go to my live account my live messaging and then you can go back to threads pretty easily. So here's our text messaging thread. I'll say the quick brown fox is digging Windows Phone. Windows Phone. So I can come in here and say, obviously I meant to say phone. Let's see if I can capitalize it. But I can come through here and individually highlight words and change those as I see fit. And that to me is nice when you're on the go and you see you misspelled a word and you're automatically trying to change it and you're walking, you don't want to spend a lot of time retyping it. That's one of the best features, in my opinion, uh, of Windows Phone 7. Now obviously this is a little bit of a, uh, a rift for me. You can see landscape mode. The keyboard's nice and large and you have a 4.3 inch display here, but you'll notice some dead space over here in the left-hand corner. Well, that's because the network connectivity bar doesn't stay at the top, so you have to actually swipe it out to get access to your signal strength, to whether you're on LTE or HSPA Plus or 3G, and your battery life indicator as well. Clock will stay there in most cases, but you'll notice that this stuff will go away after a few seconds. That's fine. You know, not my favorite thing about Windows Phone. Actually, it irritates me to no end. The battery life won't stay up there, and there's no setting to actually disable that. But you know, you don't, there's a lot of dead space here, and I can see the keyboard going all the way across the screen as opposed to being condensed right there. So a minor gripe with uh, Windows Phone. Hopefully, they'll address that in the next edition of uh, Windows Phone. But again, like I said before, you can click those three dots and come down here and see Send, Attach, and Speak. I can easily speak a text there. Now we talked a little bit about settings, so let's go in and take a look at the settings and I'll show you some personalization options that you have out of the gate. Now in terms of personalization, we look at let's say Windows Phone, iOS, and Android, the three most dominant 
uh, operating systems. And I would say, you know, comparing them on a one to 10, Android's probably a nine on the customization scale. iOS is probably a five. This is probably a three. I mean, you do get the ability to change the wallpaper and you can see when I turn it off and back on, I have the wallpaper there. And obviously it's something I've customized. It's the city of Charlotte and I can lift up and you can change the theme as well. You can change it from a dark color to a light color, as you see. And of course, because it's an AMOLED display, light colors obviously use more battery life. And I can change the accent color as well. So I can come in here and choose, you know, mango, for example. And I can go back out and all of my tiles will be mango. So you can make some minor customizations. Unfortunately, you can't do any wallpaper behind the Metro UI scheme here or on the menu itself. Of course, I can, uh, just so you know, I can click that arrow as well. So some personalization is not as much as I would like. And I think for those people that really like personalization and like customizing their device, that might be an issue in the short term with Windows Phone. You can add tiles, you can move stuff around on the home screen, but it's still not as much customization as we've seen in iOS and to actually a greater extent uh, in Android. So we can come down here and see airplane mode, Wi-Fi, very simple settings. And I can go into applications as well and take a look at the settings by individual applications. I have my email and accounts, my lock and wallpaper, battery saver, and then another minor gripe that I have is you can't actually see, without going way into settings, you can't actually see what percentage of your battery is left. So I'm the type of person I'd love to have a tile out here that says 67% battery remaining, and I can easily see it. And that would save me from having to pull this down. But again, like I said earlier, this always goes back up. There's no option to actually pull it down and keep it down in the actual settings. Otherwise, minor gripes, but stay tuned for part two where we talk about the camera, some additional apps, and more.